Hello everyone, my name is Nigel Arifi, I'm Head of Innovation at SAM. Um, so I'll just do a really quick brief introduction to who the hell we are. Um, we're an e-commerce brand, uh, agency that basically does a lot of the, the back-end integration stuff, but also uh, consultancy and strategy as well. We're about 750 people, um, and we're pretty much based uh, in Watford, but we've got offices all over the place. Um, but really, my team specifically is the innovation team. We've kind of dubbed this plan. Um, and really our purpose is to uh, inspire, educate and execute. So my team has its own developers and designers and we basically go out and test new technologies, see how they work and then apply them to the problems for our clients to so solve them. Um, and really what we're about is pushing ourselves and our clients towards new technology. And the important thing there is we like, we like to talk from a point of experience. So rather than just doing the desk research, we have to go out there and actually build stuff on top of tech as well. So I've kind of broken my presentation down into four little bits. So fact about Amazon that should make you concerned. Um, then we're going to go into should you be on Amazon? Who's doing it well? And then what should you do? And first of course, you know, why do people go on Amazon? Well, it's relatively easy to get on. Um, it's got massive reach, great service for their users. If you're a customer of Amazon, it's usually have a pretty good experience. They take care of distribution. I mean, that's probably one of the hardest things is getting things from A to B. Um, and then, of course, everyone else is doing it, which is probably not the best reason. Right? Um, so, this bit kind of had a different title, um, but let's just call it Concern for Now. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, we did a little, uh, little uh, test a couple of uh, months ago where we looked at about 6,000 people, asked them a bunch of questions about Amazon. And what we found is about 39% of online spend in the UK um, is done through Amazon, which is just a crazy stat. Um, for me, what I found quite interesting is that of those people, 25% of them use the Amazon Dash, which is a crazy thing because that's that button, you just press it, you're completely locked in. So there are people out there, 25%, who are using this product. And say, for example, it's very washing up liquid, they will only get that product from Amazon now. They are completely locked in. Um, something that's probably not that surprising is um, we found that about a third of people aren't that loyal to the retailer. Um, they, they're more interested in getting the right product with the right service at the right price, um, which shouldn't really come as a bit of a surprise, but also means that we need to focus on creating the best experience possible. Um, some stats from the US as well. It's, you know, a lot of analysts are saying that 50% of online spend will be going through um, Amazon by 2021, which again, just a crazy stat, um, which really just shows how much power and sway they have. Um, but my favorite ones are really, like I was mentioned earlier about revenue. So in Q2 this year, they spent about 30, they, um, they got about $38 billion in revenue um, with 197 million profit. That's zero, no, that's 0.5184%, right, of their overall revenue. So compare that to like Facebook and Google and everything, that's a tiny number. Um, and it's actually one of their best quarters as well. My favorite graph is this one. Shows their revenue, so you can see um, how it goes up. You can hear that? Ooh. Can you hear me okay? So you can see Christmas there at each one of those points, but the best bit is that bottom bit, their, um, their income. That tiny little one in the back there, that is uh, their biggest quarter of about 800 million they've got. Um, but really, you can tell that the, the main thing they're doing here is pumping that money back into innovation, back into R&D, back into ensuring that they're delivering the best possible experience they can. They're at a point now where actually 50% of their profit of their entire lifetime has actually come in the last two to three years. They're making so much money, they probably can't spend it fast enough. So if we compare that to say Walmart, so the largest company in the world by revenue, um, this is a chart from 2015, Walmart's net profits for um, 2015 was 14 billion. At that time, in the 21 years that Amazon had been around, they'd only made $2.5 billion in profit. So that uh, just shows you the difference in expenditure that the two companies have. Now what that's led to is basically Amazon having a humongous uh, market cap compared to, uh, to Walmart because everyone kind of see, you know, they're innovating, the, 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 the possibility for growth for them is absolutely huge. Now, you can see this quite clearly in the way that Jeff Bezos thinks. When he's investing heavily in um, Blue Origin, which is um, space uh, flight. Now at the minute this is basically for just consumers to go up in space, but I pretty much will bet you any kind of money that he's also thinking about what is Amazon going to play in that space, because, you know, getting a product around the world is going to be much easier than, say, a distribution center in space. 
Um, you know, if you want to be able to do, um, send a product anywhere in the world in 90 minutes, you need distribu distribution center in space. And they've already got patents for airships and things like that to actually just float above cities and just drop things off. So this is a completely different mindset to a lot of brands, a lot of companies, a lot of retailers. They are thinking not in two to three years. I mean, this is thinking like 10, 20 years in the future. And that's where you've got to kind of think as well now. So what will they sell? Well, you know, it's that A to Z, you know, they're going to sell absolutely everything they can. And I think that's going to be the most interesting thing. So um, I've got just two examples of what happens if, say, they enter your market. Um, if you haven't read Mary Meeker's Internet Trends Report that came out earlier this year, I definitely recommend you read it. It's about 300 pages, but it is really good. Um, there's something in there for everybody. And the best example is, um, is batteries. So they went from absolutely nothing um, to now 94% of all online batteries are sold through Amazon. On top of that, 31% of it is actually Amazon basics. So they've gone from nothing to absolutely eating all the, the sales that um, Duracell, Panasonic, Energizer, all those things just chewed up by Amazon because they had the amount of money to go in there and actually innovate and just give the customer the cheapest possible option. Now, the interesting thing as well is they own the interface. So last week I was going out to, to buy some batteries um, for some devices in the lab, and it turned out that Duracell was the only one that was selling one I wanted. But they've actually, what they've done is put their own batteries right in here. So I'm going off and thinking about Duracell batteries, but one of the largest things on the screen is Amazon's own products. So straight away, I'm completely thinking now, all right, if I need AA batteries, I'm not gonna go to Duracell, I'm gonna click on the AA batteries right there. So again, that's another thing to think about when competing with them. Um, another one really quickly, baby wipes. Uh, Amazon went from nothing and in 2.5 years, uh, they now have 15% uh, of the marketplace. Um, second only to Pampers and uh, Huggies. So again, another area where if you don't think they're gonna be coming into your marketplace, um, they probably are. So you need to start thinking about what are you gonna do if they go into that space. Now, one of the things that they've done is really focused on owning the experience, owning the customer, owning the data, um, and, and trying to own the interface as well. And you can see this really simply in you know, their strategy with hardware. So they're going for um, the echo look, the, the show, they're really trying to get a microphone in every single part of your life. Um, so that you know, at any point you have a thought about buying a product, they'll have something there to fulfill that, um, that need for you. It's gonna be in cars, it's already in headphones, so like the Bragi Dash, if you buy those wireless headphones, they come with, Ale uh, with Alexa built in. Um, phones, if you buy the HTC um, 111, it's got Alexa built in, it is gonna be absolutely ever. You're not gonna be able to go anywhere without being able to call up Alexa to get you to buy something. Um, so the real question is, why well, should you be on Amazon? And of course the answer is yes, but we kind of look at it as more of a, um, one of the strategies you should have. So there are three areas you need to focus on and make sure you're extremely balanced between all of them. If say you're leaning too heavily on the marketplaces, then you've got a bit of a problem. So if 90% of your revenue is coming through Amazon, you know, as and when they go into your market, they're probably gonna eat you for lunch. So you've gotta break it down between the marketplaces, so it's like Amazon, your existing distribution channels, so that's retailers, um, and then you've got your direct to consumer as well. Um, and it really needs to be balanced between all of them because like I said, Duracell probably didn't think that Amazon was gonna go into batteries and now they've lost a massive section of uh, revenue for it. So, who's doing it well? I thought I'd just give you just one example um, of a brand that I use quite a lot, but I also buy from Amazon and also directly, um, and that's Converse. Um, I went on to just buy some new shoes a couple weeks ago and I saw these really nice ones and I thought, you know, this is quite nice. And as always, I went straight to Amazon first. Um, turns out it was 130 pounds on Amazon, and I was like, eh, that's not too bad. Do you know what, I'll just check really quickly on Converse's site. Turns out they're usually 60 quid, and they were on offer for 34 pounds. So I, I don't know whether or not they did that on purpose, whether they actually had it slightly cheaper on their own website, but I don't know if it's cheaper, it's like six times cheaper or three times cheaper. Um, but it was quite an interesting tactic. The other thing that they've done is there's a hell of a lot more choice on the Converse website than there is on Amazon. So you go onto Amazon, like for me, I'll just buy like my black standard Converse, if I go to Amazon, I'll probably want to buy more of the custom stuff, which comes down to something like these. So if you want a pair that looks like it's been worn by someone in like a, I don't know, oil slip for three years, the only place you can get that is going direct to Converse to buy that specific product. What they've also done on top of that is actually built up this idea of customization. So you can go into their website and get custom 
um, colors and different rivets, the different color of tongue, the sole, you completely have a different experience. So if you compare that to going on Amazon, where it's very much specific, you're going there for one particular color, they're now delivering a service above and beyond what's available on Amazon. So again, a really good example of spreading out what you're doing within the platforms. So what should you do? Well, this is just my last two slides. Uh, I kind of broke it down into thinking about strategy even more. So thinking longer than the two to three years um, and going for that 10 years. I mean, we've got to think really far now about where you want the brand to be. Um, also finding a good partner to ensure that you can deliver a balanced um, strategy along all these different areas. Um, don't assume that Amazon won't get in your market because they probably will, because it makes complete sense for them to own every single part of a product that they sell. Um, of course, don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. Um, really think hard about why you're doing what it is you're doing and really try to deliver something that's unique on that platform. And finally, um, the most important thing is, is just do something. Right? I talk to a lot of brands, a lot of companies which talk a big game, but when it comes down to it, they don't put their money where their mouth is. And you cannot be a fast follower anymore. It's the point where technology is moving so quickly, you have to just do something. Be happy to prevail, um, and just at least you've learned something, you can move on and do something else. And so, this is kind of like how I look at it. It's not if Amazon will be a competitor, but it's how much of the pie do you want when they are. So really just kind of go out there, build interesting experiences and great products, and people will start coming and buying your stuff. And that is it. Thank you very much.